Hi, welcome to Microbiology Mentor. We are here to discuss yet another important topic, E. coli associated diarrheal diseases, also known as diarrheogenic E. coli or intestinal pathogenic strains of E. coli. This topic is very important, not only for subjective examination, but also for various competitive examinations and loads of questions are being repeatedly asked in different competitive examinations. So let's see this and understand the various nuances of these. Intestinal pathogenic strains are basically the strains of E. coli which are capable of causing diarrheal diseases. These strains are obligate pathogens that means that they rarely are found in normal fecal flora of a healthy person. But they, these strains are also called as pathotypes because of their unique virulence trait which are present in each although they have some common traits but they are known to have certain unique traits which give them or impart them a special ability to cause range of intestinal infections like enteritis enterocolitis and colitis so let's see what are the types of e coli or pathotypes of e coli so first is enterotoxigenic or etec enterotoxigenic e coli enterotoxigenic or etec second one is enteropathogenic or epec next one is entero invasive eiec then Again, fourth one is enterohemorrhagic EHEC. EHEC. Then, again, the fifth one is enteroaggregative E. coli EAEC. EAEC. And sixth one is diffusely adherent E. coli. So, as I have already discussed, that these are various pathotypes and they have distinct virulence trait and have distinct different clinical conditions they have they all causes intestinal manifestation but their the manifestation ranges from diarrhea to dysentery sometimes self limiting or it can be fatal so let's see the details of each one individually first enterotoxigenic e coli so as the name suggests, it is enterotoxin. So there is some production of toxin here. So toxin is important here. So you must remember ET or T is for toxin as a mnemonic. And it is a major cause of endemic diarrhea in tropical or developing countries and most common agent of traveler's diarrhea. So it is causing traveler's diarrhea. T for toxigenic strain, T for toxin and T for traveler's diarrhea. So it is a cause of endemic diarrhea as well as of of course of, of our developing countries as well as they are also known to cause traveler's diarrhea. So the food responsible for this clinical manifestation includes the poorly cooked or unpeeled or unrefrigerated foods also contaminated water. And manifestation is because of the production of the toxin as I have already said. What are the toxin? Toxin is either ST or LT which is produced as the organism bind to the enterocytes. There is a production of the toxin either ST or LT which leads to the activation of adenylcyclase which is responsible for watery diarrhea and cramps. There are certain characteristics which must be noted because of which it this organism is known like there is a typical absence of histopathological changes within the small bowel as well as there are there is absence of mucus blood and other inflammatory cells in the stool also fever is absent fever is absent. So there is typical absence of these changes and the pathology is because of the toxin. Now see, let's see the other one that is, which is enteropathogenic. 
सो दिस इज ई पी ई सी और एंटेरो पैथोजेनिक स्ट्रेन दिस स्ट्रेन इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर आउटब्रेक ऑफ इन्फेंटाइल डायरिया विच इज अकरिंग इन डेवलपिंग कंट्रीज सो द पॉपुलेशन इंक्लूड्स एफेक्टेड पॉपुलेशन इंक्लूड्स द यंग चिल्ड्रेन एज वेल एज द न्यू नेट्स हियर द क्लिनिकल मैनिफेस्टेशन इज नीदर बिकॉज ऑफ ए टॉक्सिन nor it is of invasion so there is no toxin as you can make a note no toxin nor invasion so the question comes in mind so what is the pathology here so the pathology here is the adhesion to the mucosa of the microorganism following adhesion there is some protein translocation which finally leads to the effacement of microvilli as well as there is pedestrial formation this is pedestrial formation this is typical changes which is occurring in a case of epec infection of a of an enterocytes therefore this is also known as this strain is also known as entero adherent e coli because there is a change of effacement of microvilli microvilli getting blunted as well as there is some pedestrial like of formation so the clinical manifestation is fever and vomiting okay so there is vomiting and as well as fever along with the diarrhea which is usually self limiting here it may be noted that the transmission is rapid and it is from person to person spread may also occur so it may be noted that the strain can be identified by the adhesion to typical hep2 cells so this is characteristic of epec now coming to yet another pathotype eiec so ei that is entero invasive e coli so as the name suggests there is some invasion of the organism occurring here so yes it is there so this pathotype Has, is genetically as well as clinically the manifestation which is produced is like shigella the only difference here is that in case of shigella low, low dose of inoculum is required almost 10 to the power 2 to 10 to the power 3 but here large inoculum is required which range from 10 to the power 8 to 10 to power 10 colony forming unit so again this is causing again manifestation in children's in developing countries and how the pathology is going on so that there is colonization and invasion of colonic mucosa followed by the replication and cell to cell spread just like in shiga the so shigella sorry so there is scanty stool the clinically manifestation is scanty stool here containing mucosa blood and inflammatory cells fever abdominal pain tenesmus is present at the same time this condition is self limiting so here you may make a note that there is presence of blood which is leading to it, to the manifestation of dysentery okay and there is invasion here you can see that the organism is getting invaded into the adjacent cells so again Uh, there are certain characteristics on uh, the like it is able to invade the intestinal epithelial cell in vivo and penetrate hela and hep2 cells at the same time in laboratory this strain can be diagnosed by performing a test which is known as serenis test so what is serenis test here if you inst if you instill a intraocular if you just put the intro in the in, in the eyes intraocular this strain into a guinea pig there is development of redness as well as redness develops as well as there is there, there is conjunctival suffusion so there is redness because of this entero invasive strain so this gives serenis test positive which is done by installation in the eyes of guinea pig so guinea pig eyes serenis test entero invasive 
and dysentery. So let's see enterohemorrhagic E H E C. So characteristic here is it is most frequently in the industrialized or developed countries. So with this may be noted that because this is quite different from other strain here this strain is quite known or frequent to cause manifestation in developed countries rather developing countries so the food responsible is under cooked ground beef as well as fresh spanish so what happens here the manifestation is because of certain toxin which are virocytotoxin or vt or it is shiga like toxin or stx1 and 2 toxin which is a class of rhizo ribosomal inactivating proteins so you can see after the organism is getting binded here is the production of s Px toxins which when absorbed causes certain systemic manifestation. What are those systemic manifestations? It produces from mild diarrhea to fatal hemorrhagic colitis to HUS which is hemorrhagic uremic syndrome which is basically a triad of symptoms of thrombocytopenia, acute renal failure and microangiopathic hemolytic anemia so this is comparatively a fatal condition so from mild diarrhea to a fatal hus kinds of kind of clinical manifestation this ehec is causing so a typical strain of ehec which is known as ehec 0157h7 is most prominent serotype which is responsible for causing this clinical manifestation and this is quite easily identified by not able to ferment not mind it it is not not able to ferment sorbitol so it is not able to ferment this strain is o157 s7 is not able to ferment sorbitol on sorbitol mcconkey agar so now let's see the other pathotypes like eaec or entero aggregative e coli so the word here is aggregative so some aggregation thing is going on yes it is but see what age group and how, what kind of clinical manifestation it is causing so it is causing acute as well as chronic diarrhea how chronic 14 days more than 14 days in young children in developing countries although the exact pathogenesis or the pathogenic mechanism is not known but it is known to adhere to the small intestine of intestine and the large boil bowel epithelium where it leads to the thick biofilm formation and production of certain toxins you can see here after binding to the enterocytes epithelia here it is leading to the production of certain cytotoxins and enterotoxins like SHET1 that is Shigella enterotoxin 1 and EAST1 that is enteroaggregative E. coli ST1. So this is interestingly found associ also associated with traveler's diarrhea as well as it is known to cause persistent diarrhea in HIV patients. So this is important because it is known to cause persistent diarrhea in HIV patients. In vitro diffuse or stag big pattern of adherence to the epithelial cell is seen. So this was characteristic of EAEC. Now coming to the diffusely adherent E. coli. So diffusely adherent E. coli is least studied type of pathotype of E. coli. And this is capable of causing diarrheal disease in children of age group 2 to 6 years in some of the developing countries. Probably the correct mechanism is not known but some adhesins like AFA and D or DR may be responsible for the pathogenesis of infection. 
At the same time, it is also found that there are certain characteristic signal transduction effects in the small bowel enterocytes, which is manifested as the growth of long finger like cellular projections which wrap around the microorganism. You can see here. Not much is studied about it. So, with this, we've come to an end of the topic diagenic e coli i hope you have enjoyed thank you